Hi friends, David here from Above AVL and Learn Stage Lighting. And today we want to talk about ArchNet and SACN, AKA Networked DMX, why you should care. Let's dive in. If you're not familiar and I know not all of you are because we run into people every single day at Above AVL who aren't. ArtNet and SACN are ways to run DMX over a network. Why? Well, at the end of the day, uh, one of the problems that you're gonna run into if you work with stage lighting and you start working with larger or more complex lighting rigs, you're gonna realize that some of the lights you have might get really complex and start to use up a lot of channels. The old way of doing things of just coming out of a console with you know three, four DMX wires, shooting down a snake to the stage, and then you know going into different fixtures are kind of over. Okay, why? Well, let's look at it simply. So something like these pixel bars we have here, these are the Gamma Pixel Strip IP. We absolutely love these as a pixel bar. They're more reliable than a lot of the other brands. They come in at a great price, we just love them. But this bar, for example, is one meter long and it is 80 pixels, which means at red, green, and blue, it is now 240 channels. So every two fixtures, which I've got one, two right here, so that's six. Every two fixtures, you use a whole DMX universe. So that means you've got to start a new DMX port, right? If this is your console, you know, this could be two lights and then this could be two lights coming on the back of your console and then you're stuck. Whether you're working with larger rigs that just have lots of fixtures or more complex fixtures or both, when you start getting over, you know, two, three, four universes of DMX, you don't want to run big, thick wads of cable to get your DMX distribution done. You know, to get from your console to your lights, right? It's not effective. It's not efficient. It is effective. It's not efficient, though. And if you have to troubleshoot, it can become kind of a hairy mess because you've got a whole bunch of wires that you're trying to sort through, color code, keep track of. There's got to be a better way. So that's why we like networked DMX. So networked DMX or ArtNet and SACN have a few really big advantages. Okay, in this room right now, um, because our console's out on loan with a customer, I am using a PC that is using a ArtNet node that has two ports, a Netron EP2, to run this entire lighting ring. Well, to run the DMX fixtures of these mega light light pipes, okay? The pixel bars in the back are just going straight off the computer without ever going to DMX cable, okay? And they could be hugely beneficial because as I mentioned, there are many fixtures on the market that in their highest, most complex channel modes will take up a whole universe by themselves. I'm thinking of the Volux Phantom, for example. Okay, one per universe, done. Okay, if you're running DMX wire, that's gonna be a pain in the butt. Not only that, you're gonna end up buying a bunch of nodes to convert to DMX just to go to only one fixture, which you know seems kind of ineffective. Okay, so ArtNet and SACN essentially, you know, one advantage is that you can run a whole bunch of network of DMX universes down one single cable. Okay, how many? Well, a lot. The theoretical limit for either protocol is honestly much higher than most people ever touch. The other upside is in a either more complex rig or an installed space, you now don't have to run a wire directly from your lighting console to your stage, right? It can, your lighting console can plug into a facility network anywhere in the facility if your network's set up right, and your DMX output box can be wherever it needs to be, or they could be multiple, okay? Another common way of doing things is to put DMX nodes, individual ones, like these Netron EP2s, can hang with a clamp, can has two DMX ports out, it can be wall mounted, it can hang on a pipe, it can hang on a truss. So everywhere that you need lighting, you can go ahead and put a node at each place. And you get a node, and you get a node, and you get a node. It's, it's starting to sound like Oprah in here. But what happens is now, you can just send one cable out of your console to your stage, 
have a network rack on stage, branch out, or it can sit on an existing network, as we mentioned. Okay, so a lot of people say, you know what? Getting started with this DMX stuff, getting started with this networking stuff can be really complicated. Like, what about these IP addresses? What about this and that? And then it doesn't work right and we're frustrated, right? That's gonna be the biggest thing with networking. I've kind of got two thoughts for that. The first is that let's walk through some really basic examples here so that you can get a, and basic, but honestly, enough for a lot of people set up. So if you haven't used Network DMX before, in about five minutes here, I can walk you through some very basic, easy setups. Number two is that um, no matter what you do in live events, um, whether you're a lighting guy, video guy, an audio guy, you know, show producer, whatever, networking is building its way into your life more and more every year. So it's kind of silly to ignore it. <laughs> the more you can learn about it, the more it's going to help you. Okay, so basic setups. The cool thing about something like Artnet and SACN, networked DMX, or anything else that's network based in your show control, is that there's gonna be a set of rules and standards that everything follows, and these are networking, computer networking standards. Okay, so just like your phone or your computer connects to a network, you know, connects to Wi Fi, you know, plugs into do a network. Everything that connects together gets what's called an IP address, okay? IP address, I'll just write add, okay? And an IP address is basically like, it's an address. It's a place to go find that device. Now it's not hard coded, just like a DMX address, you can change it, and it's either set manually or set by a router in the system, technically a DHCP server, which is often found in routers. Okay, asterisk there for the networking pros. Um, because the deeper you get into networking, the more you basically go, well, you know, that statement's true, but, you know, except when, um, but for simple stuff, router hands out IP addresses. In a lot of show control networks, if you're just hooking up, like let's just say, you know, you're doing a console, right? Let's draw some really bad console here. Okay, so some sort of bad rendition of a console there. So you've got a console. And you know, we're, you know, biggest case scenario, right? You're gonna come out of the console, you're gonna hit a network switch, okay? And this can just be a, in this case, a simple, what we call an unmanaged network switch, um, and that's what they're called. Um, very inexpensive, five port switch, it can be like 20 bucks these days, but it's just simple, there's no configuration, everything that comes in just goes out everywhere else, okay? And then you're just gonna go, you know, multiple directions, you know, two, three, four, five directions, two different DMX nodes, right, that are in your system. And maybe even some of the nodes have two ports, two network ports on them, which is just a network switch, mostly. And, and then you go out to another node, right? And, and if this is the most complicated you get, which is a great place to start, then here's what you've got to do, okay? In this system with just a network switch, Okay, and these are nodes, DMX nodes. Just a simple network switch, okay? All you have to do is assign the IP addresses to all the devices yourself. It's highly recommended, okay? So out of the box, when we're talking, for example, Artnet, but it'll also work on SACN, a lot of show control products, including Onyx, which we're a big fan of, and all of the Netron or ADJ branded nodes, they basically out of the box generally come pre-configured for a Artnet type IP address. Now, it's not specific to Artnet, it's not you know that you couldn't use something else, but out of the box configuration, it's going to start with an IP address that is two dot, okay? And then there's gonna be three more sets of numbers called octets. We'll just do x dot x dot x, okay? And that is the unique IP address of each device, okay? First number is the same in this case, the next three are different. Now, why is that important? Well, that determines whether they can connect to each other. And this is honestly one of the most common issues we see with people with networking. That means we gotta talk about the subnet mask, okay? So the subnet mask is basically what determines what they can talk to, who they can talk to on a network. 
And again, if we're talking a network with just a handful of devices, we can let them all talk to each other. They're gonna be just fine. And so in that case, we're gonna set up a subnet mask of 255.0.0.0. Why did I choose that specific number? I chose that specific number because 255 gener means like must match, okay? Like all, okay? So that means anything that starts with a two, it's gonna be able to see, and then it's gonna be able to reach in the network, and then the next three numbers can all be different, okay? So you can get fancier, like a lot of times on a typical computer network, just in your house, all your devices will be 255.255.255.0, okay? So three 255s and then an O. And that means that the device can see anything where the first three numbers, sets of numbers match, but the last number's different, okay? In this case, simple ArtNet or SACN networks, choose one that all your devices can use, doesn't matter in this case. Setting your IP address in that two dot range and a lot of devices like the ones I spoke of just have a ArtNet range where they just choose a number in there and they're all gonna be different. And so setting the subnet mask to 255.255.255.0.0.0 means stuff's gonna work. Okay, so now, you know, say my console is 2.1.2.3, you know, this is 2.100.2.4, you know, and we'll all make them different numbers, but as long as, let's just go to 2.48.56.7, as long as none of them match, they will be able to talk to each other. So that just, you know, for the very basic level networking, we're gonna leave you with this. The two top issues we see where people, you know, get a new product, they buy something from us at Above AV and they get their personalized price and they're like, okay, now I'm banging my head against the wall, why doesn't this networking work, okay? A lot of times, if you take a device, for example, that's in this two dot range and you just plug it into a home network, home router or business, you know, small business router, okay, that router, is in the IP address of 192.168.0.1. Say so that's a very common one, okay? And it's in that range, and this is in two dot something dot something dot something, and the subnet mask is 255.0.0.0. That means the first digit, the first octet needs to match, and it doesn't, which means they can't talk. And that's why people go, oh, I've got this device, I'm typing in the IP address, you know, my computer can't find it. That's where programs like the Netron nodes have their CLU software that helps you get through those kinds of things, allows you to see stuff you can't actually talk to and change it with a little voodoo magic uh, in the background, as I call it. But, you know, that's, that's the first thing, is that IP addresses are not in range, means your devices are not gonna talk to each other, okay? And then what's the second big issue? The second big issue that we see people run into all the time is they go, hey, I've got my console and I've got a node and I've set them both to let's just say 2.1.2.3, okay? That's where we stop you in your tracks when you say, I've set them both because one of the core principles of computer network is that each device has a different IP address. So 2.1.2.3 is not a good option for the second device, but the first device could be, we'll go A, could be that, and the second device could just be 2.1.2.4, right? And that's a common way to do things, just to you know start with one number and then just increase the last digit by one for every device and you'll be good to go, okay? Um, so. That's the second big problem we say. If you're building simple, simple networks for just doing you know, basic nodes with consoles, maybe the occasional pixel driver, like for these gamma pixel strips, the occasional video device, then the principles we talked about in this video are gonna keep you going and it's gonna be good. If you wanna dive deeper, we have other videos on networking, I believe in a playlist here on YouTube. We'll include this video in that playlist too. And when you need anything, whether networking gear, like nodes and consoles, whether you're looking for light fixtures themselves, a new PA system, video, we've got it all at Above AVL. And we'd love to help you get it into your hands. So head over to aboveavl.com. Feel free to add stuff to your quote or add stuff to your cart, request a quote. You can always email us and request a quote. 
What we love to do is help you get all the stuff you need, help you get it at your personalized price by quoting it out, or just buy it through the price, through the web store as well. You can do that too. Either way, we wanna serve you. We wanna help you get the stuff you're looking for in your hands, get you the right stuff the first time so that you can go create amazing events. If that sounds good, come over to aboveavl.com. We wanna serve you for the next four or five decades or more to come. We'll see you there. Thanks.